It has been three full years, a little more actually, since January 6th, 2021, the unarmed insurrection that was supposedly worse than 9-11. And the FBI is still on the case. In fact, tracking down people who exercised their constitutional rights and went to the Capitol that day seems to be the FBI's main task. Still, the FBI is still coming through video footage to track down Trump supporters who were there and throw them in jail. Message Never gather to exercise your constitutional right of assembly. Do not complain about the regime. And to make that point, the Biden administration has arrested over 1,200 people, and that number will grow by hundreds, apparently. The FBI wants you to know that if you were there, you can't hide because facial recognition software and all the advanced technology of the Biden surveillance state is being applied to catch anyone who offended them. But what's interesting, fascinating, actually, and very troubling, is that the FBI can't find any information about the person or people who planted two pipe bombs outside the RNC and the DNC the night before. That's amazing. So here's the FBI's version of what happened with the bombs. The FBI releasing new video of the person suspected of planting those pipe bombs the night before the Capitol riot. And the FBI officially confirming those pipe bombs placed at the Democratic and Republican National Committee headquarters could kill. These pipe bombs were viable devices that could have been detonated, resulting in serious injury or death. The video offering specific detail on the suspect's movements. By 7.52, the suspect has made it to the DNC headquarters. The suspect sits on a bench and appears to fumble with that backpack. A bomb is later discovered in the bush adjacent to the bench. At 814, the same suspect walking down an alley next to the RNC headquarters. A bomb placed there as well before exiting the area, walking past the Capitol Hill Club. So you probably haven't heard a lot about that story since then. Nobody has. But a few months ago, there was a very significant development. Capitol Police quietly released new surveillance video from the moment, showing the moment that one of the bombs was discovered. And that video, if you watch it carefully and apply common sense to it, raises some very disturbing questions about what this was all about. No one in the media has picked up on this, of course. They're studiously not interested, which is very odd because all they talk about is January 6th, but not the pipe bombs. Let's not talk about those. Virtually the only person in media who's been interested in this and pulling the thread on this from day one has been Darren Beatty, who runs Revolver News. And he has updates on what he's found today. Darren, thanks so much for coming on. You've been on this story really since the day that it happened. For people who haven't followed this, and of course, no one else in media is talking about it, so many people might not know the details. Can you just give us a quick overview of the facts of these attempted bombings? Absolutely. And thanks for having me again and for drawing attention to this, I think, critically important story at a critically important time. If, if you would, I'd like to explain this latest video that you described that has been released quietly and I will say extremely reluctantly by the Capitol Police thanks to the efforts of Congressman Massey. I'd like to describe what's in that video because just as a self-contained analysis, it's explosive in its own right, and then proceed to contextualize that yes. in relation to our previous discoveries about the pipe bomb. So. Let's start with this video, and I hope people can, can see it um, on this uh, interview and see it at revolver.news where it is. We've just published it. Um, and it's really remarkable. What it depicts is the discovery of the DNC bomb at approximately 1.05 p.m. on January 6th. And if you follow the timestamps closely, you can see this guy in a backpack come into frame at around 105. What he does is he first approaches a car, which is a Metro PD car, talks to the driver's side in the window for a while, then moves to the other side of the window, and then eventually moves and chats with somebody in a black SUV, which is a Secret Service car chatting with Secret Service. In fact, We've learned through multiple sources that the Metro PD was part of that Secret Service detail. Why was the Secret Service there? We'll get to that in due course. But the guy finishes talking to the SUV, 
and then leaves the frame. What the individual in the backpack is doing is alerting the Metro PD and the Secret Service of the fact that there is a pipe bomb just feet away that was planted by the park bench outside of the DNC. Now, for those watching this video, and everyone has to watch this video to follow along, the first thing that will strike you as remarkable is just how utterly unconcerned both the Metro PD and the Secret Service are about being informed that there was a pipe bomb literally within feet of them and within feet of their protectee, who was VP elect Kamala Harris. You'll notice if you watch from approximately 107 to 109 in the timestamp, utterly lackadaisical, utterly unconcerned, takes them minutes to even get out of their vehicles, at which point they're just kind of lingering around, uninterested, unconcerned. And then this alone is enough to be a national scandal and blow up in this investigation um, with, with severity. And that is the Secret Service, the Metro PD, you'll see this, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. They allow a group of children cross the street in the direction of the pipe bomb and allow the children to walk within feet of the park benches where the pipe bomb was planted. The Secret Service agent as well is walking right with the children within feet of this bomb. Then, about a minute later, a Capitol Police officer walks even closer to the bomb, takes a picture of it, gives a thumbs up sign, leaves, after which point the Metro PD car, the Secret Service car leave, and then the video is over. Now, I know from very reputable sources who have seen the extended video that minutes after that, they have a bomb safe robot come to dismantle and defuse this bomb. Now, people listening to this are probably asking themselves, first of all, why the unconcern from the Secret Service and the Metro PD? Unconcerned for themselves? Unconcerned for their protectee, Kamala Harris? unconcerned for the children that they cavalierly allowed to walk within feet of this explosive device. And that concern juxtaposed and contrasted with the fact that they needed a bomb safe robot to dis diffuse this pipe bomb, this alleged pipe bomb. So those are the facts that are illustrated incontrovertibly um, in this video and that I think as a self-contained analysis are sufficient to be a national scandal. But as I said, it gets far worse when we contextualize this information in light of the history of our reporting on the pipe bombs, which I'm happy to get into, but I'd like to pause in, in case you have any reaction to this. I, well, I'm, I'm stunned by it. It doesn't make any sense at all, um, just on, obviously. Um, my first question is, who is the man who alerted Metro PD, Washington, D.C., local cops and Secret Service to the presence of the bomb? Indeed. And that is the definitive question. That is the question that I think will be the breakthrough that ultimately unravels what is perhaps one of the darkest and most scandalous government cover ups in recent history. Who is this individual in, in the backpack? And what did he say to these cap to the, as you know, first of all, there's a matter of protocol. Even if they know the bomb is fake, there's still a protocol they have to follow, which is totally contravened by the way that they acted in the aftermath. But more, more importantly, how did they know that it was a fake bomb such that they could exhibit such a impossible lack of concern? And then why, if they knew that it was fake, would they go through the charade and spectacle of having a bomb safe robot dismantle it? Now, these questions, I think, intensify and get even darker and more damning when we consider the full context. Let's start with the DNC bomb. What's the history of this bomb? Well, according to the FBI and the surveillance footage that the FBI has presented to the public, 
which is incidentally surveillance footage from the DNC. And we can get to that in a little bit. But the surveillance footage and the FBI story indicate that the bombs weren't January 6 bombs in the sense that they weren't planted on January 6. They were allegedly planted, according to the footage, the evening before, approximately 8 p.m. on January 5th. Now, so at the time that the backpack individual went up and alerted the authorities to the bomb, that bomb had been sitting out there fairly conspicuously at the foot of the bench for over 17 hours. Now, that was one of the first anomalies that we reported that it's kind of strange that this bomb would be sitting out there for 17 hours undiscovered for that period of time, undiscovered by motorists. If you'll notice by looking at the video, there's, it's such a high foot traffic area that there's a scooter parked there. January 6 was a particularly high foot traffic time during the day. There is a regularly stationed DNC security guard right at those parking garages that managed to miss the bomb. And then, of course, the most spectacular and bizarre thing is that the Secret Service of the United States, which conducted a sweep before Kamala Harris went in there, they managed to miss that bomb too. So it was sitting out there for 17 hours undiscovered. That in itself is kind of hard to imagine. And while we're at it, Let's address the Kamala issue. She had Secret Service protection because she was the VP elect. She came within a hair's width of this explosive device, which is, according to the narrative, the most insurrectiony type aspect of January 6th. The government officially considers pipe bombs to be weapons of mass destruction. So that leads us to the additionally bizarre question that compounds the suspicion and mystery. Why would Kamala Harris actively cover up the fact that she was in the DNC building at the time. You would consider that someone like that, her political interests would be in milking that for all it's worth. Yes. Here is the first you know, woman of color VP elect who came within a hair's width of being killed by this live explosive device, and she doesn't mention it at all. Joe Biden considers January 6th to be important enough that he gave a big speech on the third anniversary. January 6th and the false understanding of the insurrection and Trump's involvement is the basis of the sham legal theory that the regime is trying to use to take Trump off the ballot and to remove him from the democratic process through extracurricular means. Kamala Harris is milking January 6th, but for whatever reason, even on the third anniversary, She's not interested in saying, well, by the way, I almost lost my own life. I, almost, I came within feet of the pipe bomb, which nearly killed me. Why did she cover that up? We must ask that question. That does not make any sense. Now, another thing that she was at the DNC. Another thing is this. The mystery of the pipe bomb just being out there for 17 hours undiscovered is so bizarre that it leads us to ask whether indeed the pipe bomb was actually planted when the surveillance footage seems to indicate and when the FBI says it was. And so a while back, we investigated the surveillance footage and we found something pretty remarkable, but I guess at this point, not surprising. We proved definitively that the FBI has in its possession a camera angle that would show definitively whether or not this pipe bomber actually planted the bomb when they said he would or she would. And for whatever reason, they've withheld that specific camera angle that we know that they have. They've withheld that critical footage from the public. Additionally, we've shown that this surveillance footage, which again comes to us via the DNC, has been artificially tampered with to the point of having a 1.6 frame per second frame rate which simply does not exist. The worst commercially available camera that you can get has an eight frame per second. Your, your dilapidated gas station in the middle of nowhere on the road is going to have a camera with eight frames per second. And we're led to believe that the DNC, a very important building with very important people who work there in a high crime city, that they managed to find something like from an antique store with a frame rate at 1.6 frame per second. 
It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. And in fact, even Stephen D'Antuono, who was the former head of the Washington field office of the FBI, incidentally, and you know, it just gets too good. It's an abundance of riches from the standpoint of the government's culpability here. Stephen D'Antuono cut his teeth in Michigan, where he oversaw the infamous and disgraced entrapment operation known as the kidnapping plot. He was handpicked by Christopher Wray to go to D.C. in the months leading up to January 6th, and he became the head of the pipe bomb investigation. Well, something remarkable happened in June of last year. He actually, in his retirement, he's now an accountant at KPMG, in his retirement, he agreed to testify before the Judiciary Committee. And basically, thanks again to Thomas Massey, who basically compiled questions based on the research we've done at Revolver.News and asked directly um, D'Antuono questions based on this research, D'Antuono effectively shrugged his shoulders with a very clear guilty conscience. He said he had no explanation for the poor quality of the DNC surveillance footage. And he was asked some other things. He was asked whether the FBI used geofencing technology to help identify this pipe bomber. The setup is perfect for a geofencing because it's just one person there. You know the location, you know the yes. time. It should be perfect. They've used the geofencing to identify multiple other January 6th participants. At which point he kind of got uncomfortable. His body language showed it. He answered, well, look, we did, in fact, try to use geofencing. But the telecom company in question got back to us and said, for this specific time, at this specific location, our data is corrupted. Well, how convenient. And after saying that, he begged the Judiciary Committee, well, let's not get involved in any conspiracy theories, guys. And then for the Whopper, which is most relevant to this video we're discussing, he was asked about the people who discovered the pipe bombs, both the DNC and the RNC, and we'll get to the RNC one in a bit. And he said, yes, naturally, in the course of an investigation, the people who discovered the bombs would be suspects, at least initially. And yet, he couldn't say whether he knew the identity of this backpack person. He actually said he didn't know. And he said he didn't even know if the person with the backpack was even interviewed. Amazing. The head of the investigation couldn't even say whether the person who mysteriously discovered this pipe bomb was even interviewed and claims to not even know who this person was. But okay, can I just so ask again, you? Again, I've got for even a more, but I want to pause for a reaction. Well, I'm just there's so many questions, but I don't want to interrupt your narrative. But here's just one. So a huge part of the surveillance state, the Biden surveillance state, is facial recognition, and that's why airports across the country are now demanding that you submit, you know, your your biometrics when you go through TSA. They're collecting a massive database. Lots of people who were at January 6th exercising their constitutional rights have been arrested on the basis of facial recognition. Why isn't that being employed here? Well, that's a great question. And the best answer I can give is actually due to the inexplicably poor quality of the surveillance video. Again, at a 1.6 frame per second, you can't get a clear shot of the face. That's why it's simply impractical. And as I pointed out, the worst commercially available security cameras have eight frames per second, precisely for that reason, is that that's the lowest that you can have and get some reasonable assurance that you're gonna have a clear shot of the face. That doesn't exist in the surveillance footage that's been made available to the public. And I find it curious, like just this Capitol Police video that Massey got released, that has profoundly better picture quality. One wonders why is the FBI, for the purposes of its public relations, relied almost exclusively on surveillance footage that comes from the DNC? that has such poor quality, you couldn't even use facial recognition on it because the face is just a nothing. So, that, so that's why the geofencing would actually be a better approach. And they said they did it and the data was corrupted. So it's very clear that there is zero interest really in getting to the bottom of who this is. And I guess on its surface level, it's strange that the DNC is uninterested. You would think that of all institutions, the DNC would be interested in covering the identity of the person, allegedly this MAGA terrorist, 
who planted an explosive device right outside of their national headquarters. And yet they seem to be the least interested all the way up to the fact that Kamala Harris, the vice president, has for some reason foregone the opportunity of milking politically the fact that she was at the DNC while the pipe bomb was there. And in fact, as I, as I recall, she didn't admit that she was at the DNC for months. We didn't know that she was there. Right. For almost that, a year. The, for almost, yeah, a year. almost a year. So <laughs> Young here people say the news is full of lies. Kennedy's motorcade. 239 people. So the death of Jeffrey Epstein.